Greetings, my fellow freedom lovers and sovereign thinkers. Thank you for tuning in to LO3 Podcast. My name is Craig, transmitting from the beautiful, swampy mangroves of South Florida. And today's date, Thursday, December 17th, 2020. Woo, yeah, it looks like um, a couple of uh, workers uh, from Alaska got some reactions to the COVID-19 shot. And, um... Of course, you have to expect that, but we still have to question everything as usual. And uh, hell, and um, looks like uh, David Knight got fired at Infowars. Has seen his last show, and it looks like uh, might have seen it in its entirety. But he's real critical about certain actions from President Trump, and he's he's not really thrilled about the Trump cult as well. And it's understandable. Like I said before in my past episodes, I'm not a Trump hater or a lover by any means. But the ones you'll got to be aware of are the Trump worshipers, that's one cult, and the haters, the other. Two factions. Like, Trump does no wrong, anything he does is horrible. Okay, so that's what we always got to pay attention to, to that. And I had a friend of mine, we had a good conversation in, those, in, those, in, that, in that topic. And it's understandable. I think it's a real shame, too, with David Knight, because I always, like, uh, observe his content, and I have a token of appreciation. And even a man, like myself, I'm pro-free speech. I don't have to agree with everything what a person says, including him. He has that right. He has his intake and his merits. That's fine by me. And it's very disappointing what happened, you know, with uh, Mr. Knight. And uh, it could be Mr. Jones is lost, as far as I'm concerned. I, I just wanna, I'm just, I'm just going to, I'm just curious, in his own words, why he terminated David Knight. I probably guess when the time comes, we'll listen to what Mr. Knight has to say. So, um, yeah, it's just, um, of course, people, some people a little bit leery now about, about losing hope, about Trump may not become president on the second term. But I always tell folks January 6th will be an interesting event. All you got to do is study the merits on, on, the, on their claims, and there's a great amount. And I'm convinced, too, there's a lot of irregularities. It doesn't matter, and like I, it's just the principle of it. And I was like, we're looking at one um, news, like, uh, looks like the NYPD in Queens raped this one woman's home. And they'll have maybe one real gun alive is all props, and they're trying to make a big stink about it, like 25 counts and um, ammunition and child endangerment. And you got the NYPD from that from that division, and we're still, look who we found. I'm like, how courageous. Without you... I would I would I would wig out because she had all these prop firearms. How pathetic. And pose like you're the king of kings of the hill. Our lords and saviors. Thank you, NYPD. Come on, folks. Don't buy that propaganda machine. Look, how come I don't see them and have the balls to go after the Blasio throw his ass in jail? For Rico racketeering. Okay, and breaching his oath. Or treason, as far as I'm concerned. You should go after him, not some woman in Queens, and she had mostly firearms and live is all for prop stuff. Not even, not even real. Give me a break. So who's the injured party? Oh, someone tipped them off. Oh my God, they're so offended. Please, meek and unmeritable, for sure. Yeah, so, um, all this fear and anxiety and no hope. Oh my goodness, doesn't look too good, folks. Yeah, it is ugly out there. Always has, this got too obvious. And of course, you hear about lockdowns, possible lockdowns maybe coming up. And folks, whatever you do, don't jump on any high horse. I know some people are losing their patience. Don't. There's plenty of other ways, too, of 
if Biden gets, even Biden gets, and whoever gets in the election, we still have the Tenth Amendment. They can make all the executive orders they want. Don't mean a dilly squat in my book. I just use that as toilet paper, wipe my rear end on it, and get, send it back to them. Now, the final, another thing, too, before I start, narrate a couple, a few articles. I'm not a big Ben Shapiro fan, but I was watching when he was, like, r- criticizing Mr. and Mrs. Harris, Kamala Harris, on Hanukkah. And he felt so insulted. And you know what? I don't blame him one bit. It was hilarious. So, <laughs> and hey, I know I'm familiar with Hanukkah about the tyr- the war on tyranny and all, war battling tyranny and all that. It's not just a dreidel and happiness and joy. It was fighting over corruption and ty- or tyranny. And that and the, and the people who actually um who are Judaic by faith, they are proud of that. That's part of their heritage. And Camilla Harris trying to think, but oh, it's happy and joy. I'm like, shut up. This is, what, this is what you want as a vice president, which she's still no and void anyway. Remember, folks, she's not a natural-born citizen. I don't give a damn. She's wired than me with the same surname. And she's not that articulate anyway. She's got the little goofy juvenile faces when someone criticizes her. That's the kind of person you want? I don't think so. Well, like I said, I'll be digressing. Try not to. And so, what I'm going to do here is do a little story time. Yay! Boop, boop, boop. Yeah. Let me see. Where is it? I'm on my phone as usual, which is okay. All right. You know, we're going to start off with here about John Wycliffe. One moment. So, I won't get any interruptions. This one came from the Epoch Times. DNI John Ratcliffe confirms there was foreign inter- interference in November's elections report. This is by Mazdoma. Yeah, Maz- Mazdoma, Mazdoma Haki. Okay, this is what it has to say here. Director of National Intelligence John Ratcliffe confirmed that there was Foreign interference in the 2020 election, according to CBS correspondent Catherine Herridge. Well, D, well, DN, DN, DNI Ratcliffe leads the 17 intelligence agencies, and he, and he has access to the most highly classified information that is held by the U.S. government. And he told CBS News that there was foreign interference by China, Iran, and Russia in November of this year, and he is anticipating a public report on those findings in January. Herridge said. Interesting. So, Iran. Looks like, look, the fact is, too, folks, Iran is not in real economic, not in good economic shape. Sometimes bad, bad, uh, bad, um, bad U.S. foreign policy t- takes a toll on us as well. So, it's like a thing of blowback, you know, like cloak and daggering to stuff. So, um, of course, who suffers the most? The rank and file, the, the non combatants, the citizens in, in those areas, including us. So, um, I'll continue on here. Ratcliffe's choice, Ratcliffe's office did not immediately respond to the Epoch Times request for confirmation of the report. Ratcliffe's statement contradicts others made by national security officials. Christopher Krebs, the the recently fired top cybersecurity official during the presidential election, testified before the Senate's Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee on Wednesday. While the elections are sometimes messy, there was a secure, this was a secure election, Krebs said. On a November 27, 60, November 27, 60 minutes interview, Krebs was asked what he thought of the Trump legal, legal team's allegations that votes were tabulated in foreign countries and were manipulated. This is what he has to say here. So all votes in the United States of America are counted in the United States of America, Krebs said. I don't understand the claim. All votes in the United States of America are counted in the United States of America, period. Adding, so again, there's no evidence that any machine that I'm aware of has been manipulated by a foreign power, period. Sidney Powell, a former federal prosecutor who has seen um, working alongside President Trump's legal team, 
question election election challenges, fi filed a letter with the Supreme Court on December 13th to notify them of two batches of recently obtained evidence about Dominion voting systems, voting equipment. Her um, letter outlines new affidavits from two new experts who allege that international interference took place in the 2020 election and that Dominion systems were connected to foreign systems around the globe. Powell said that two military intelligence analysts have signed sworn affidavits stating that the SSL certificates from Dominion Voting, DominionVoting.com were used multiple times from Canada, Serbia, and the United States. Meanwhile, the uh, Office of the Director of National Intelligence confirmed that their upcoming report includes information about relevant foreign threats from the recent decision. The IC has received relevant reporting since the election and a number of agencies have not finished coordinating on the product, said Amanda Schuch, Schuch, a, uh, Schuch, a, um, or Schuch, a spokeswoman for the office, adding that Radcliffe remains committed to an expendious release of the report. ODNI announced late Wednesday that the intelligence community, IC, has notified Ratcliffe that they will not meet the November December 18th deadline set by President Trump's executive order to submit a report on foreign threats during the November election as agencies have not finished coordinating on the product. This afternoon... Sorry about that. This afternoon, the DNI was notified by career intelligence officials that the intelligence community will not meet the December 18 deadline set by executive order and Congress to submit the IC's classified assessment on foreign interests to the 2020 U.S. election, said Soch. Such, such. I think I'm expecting this to be maybe after, you know, bar leave on the 23rd. So I'm, I'm expecting that as well. I could be mistaken, but just prepare. Prepare yourself. December 18 marks 45 days after the November 3rd election when, according to Trump's executive order from 2018, the DNI was expected to deliver a report regarding to the maximum extent ascertainable whether any interference attempts took place and nature of such interference, methods used, and who was involved and authorized such efforts. And, of course, um, Mimi Nagreen Lay. -la Lai, Lee, Lai, and Isabel von Bergen contribute to this report. Yeah, so it's going to be to be announced, right? Absolutely. So, um, basically, based on, based on the information I've examined, even through the Epoch Times, a lot of merit on the whole um, election fraud. Election fraud. And I was I was always been opposed to uh, digital ballot ballot um, box um, ballot boxes. Now, and then, of course, witnesses saying a lot of us can connect to the Internet. That's not good. Not good at all. So if that's the case, that is very dangerous, okay? And everyone worry about the hanging chat. This is a solution. Macro solutions to mega problems, right? <laughs> I said that once before. I opposed it 20 years ago. And I still stick to it by today. Well, we've got to wait and see. If the tide is turning, it'd be Merry Christmas. Lock them up. Imagine that. That Christmas gift, you're under arrest. Well, I'm not having high expectations. Just be ready. We'll see what happens. All right, next one here came from the Rutherford Institute. Victory, U.S. Uh, Supreme Court rules in favor of individuals wrongly placed on no-fly list as retaliation for not spying on religious brethren. It says here, in an 8-0 ruling that affirms right of religious individuals not to be persecuted for their faith, the U.S. Supreme Court has ruled in favor of three men who were allegedly placed on a no-fly list as retaliation for refusing to act as FBI informants within their religious communities. The Supreme Court unanimous ruling in Tanzan v. Tanvit, Justice Amy Coney Barrett, did not take part. Sends a clear message to government agents that violations of religious freedom will have consequences. Among these, that federal agents can be held liable for monetary damages. 
Appropriate Relief under the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, RFRA. The case arose after three Muslim men were allegedly placed on the government's no-fly list in retaliation for refusing to become informants on members of the religious community. The result, the resulting lawsuit sought to have the men's names removed from the no-fly list and to reimburse them monetarily for wasted airline tickets and become an income for lost job opportunities. The Rutherford Institute filed an amicus brief in Tar on Tanzan, arguing that RFRA clearly authorized recovery for, of damages for the privations of religious liberty. Attorneys Michael J. Locker, Lockerbie, George E. Quillen, Rachel Kingry O'Neill, Kevin P. Brost, Leah Gulata, Joshua M. Hawks, and uh, Akisha Gilchrist, Saneville, uh, San Saneville of Foley and Laundra LLP, Assistant Rutherford Institute, in advancing the arguments in, in Tanzan. All rights hang together. This both of the genius and the strength of the American framework of rights. The constitutional attorney, John W. Whitehead, president of the Rutherford Institute and author of Battlefield America, The War on the American People. The framers of the U.S. Constitution understood that religious freedom was for everyone, not just for a particular group of religious beliefs. In other words, the only way that freedom can prevail for Christians, for example, is for Christians to stand up and fight for religious beliefs of others. Without it, religious freedom for all people of faith will be lost. In 1993, Congress enacted the Religious Freedom Restoration Act in response to a U.S. Supreme Court decision that limited the protection granted by the religious clauses of the First Amendment. RFRA provides that a person may sue the federal government and officials for causing a substantial burden on a person's exercise of religious beliefs. The statute also allows persons to recover appropriate relief in a successful RFRA lawsuit. In, tw in, two in 2013, three Muslim men filed the RFRA lawsuit against the government and several FBI agents alleging that their rights to freedom of religion were violated when they were placed on the government's no-fly list because they refused to act as an FBI informant and provide information about persons within the Muslim communities. None of the men were suspected terrorists. The lawsuit asked that the men's names be removed from the no-fly list and that the FBI agents pay for the harm they inflicted, which included emotional distress, loss of employment opportunities, and loss of airline tickets. Although the government eventually removed them from the no-fly list, the FBI agents moved to dismiss the case, arguing that the men were not entitled to an award of money damages under RFRA. In his amicus brief before the U.S. Supreme Court, the Rutherford Institute argued that the damage awards under the RFRA are necessary to deter federal agents from depriving individuals of their religious freedoms in the future. And when you when you look at this, folks, the damages has the damage um, compensation has is merited because their rights been violated, and and, um, and is honored under Title. Oh shoot, was it uh Title Forty Eight? I think it was U.S. Code Section Nineteen Eighty Three. I believe, yeah, I believe that was it. I could um. I can look at that. Yeah, because the whole thing about convert about um compensation. One moment. I'm on my phone, so I gotta do a little wing it here. So if you hear some vibrations and all that, don't even sweat it. I think it's title. Um. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Title forty-seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's forty-seven. I'll find out. I think I made. Let me see. That may be it. That might be it. I think it's Title Forty Seven, Section Nineteen Eighty Three. I should have done this before I got online. I got online, but I'm just like winging it anyway. So, and let me see here. Yes, right. 
Yeah, section 1983, right? Hopefully I got this correct when you find out. No wrong one. I'll do the fine. You know what? I'll do the fine law dot com. That'll be better. Section 1983. All right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Let me see. Title 42. Sorry about that, folks. Tar Title 42 U.S. Code Section 1983 provides a civil cause of action against the persons responsible. That was a lawsuit on here, and um, I'll leave this on my footnotes, just to let you folks know, because every person who, under color of law of any statute, ordinance, religion, custom, or usage of any state or territory of the District of Columbia, subjects or causes to be subject to any citizen of the United States or other person in the jurisdiction thereof to the to, uh, deprivation of, of any rights, privileges, or immunities by the Constitution and Law shall be liable to the party injured in an action of law, suit in equity, or other proper proceeding for redress, except in any action brought against a judicial officer for an act of omission taken in such officer's judicial capacity. Injunctive relief shall not be granted unless a declaratory decree was violated or declaratory relief was unavailable. So, um... I'll definitely leave that on there. It's Title 42, section, U.S. Code Section 1983. And, and FindLaw.com explains everything about it. And um, it's good. It tells you the histor history of it, too, and how all this started, too. It's from the case of... um, <coughs> well, the Supreme Court, um, Monroe versus Pape. So um, they use that statue. So therefore, I will add that to the memo. But that's good, at least, because the whole thing is this, folks... It can happen to any of us. Okay, so even you don't have to agree that one person's creed, even if it's your enemy, you got to support their, you got to make sure their liberties aren't oppressed either. If not, you create a presence that will soon come to you. Thomas Paine made that uh, quote. I'm just paraphrasing what he said, but I always agree on that. Even ones I don't like, they have the right to free speech, peace to assemble, and they practice their own creed. As long as you don't violate others. So I'm going to add that to the memo there. And I'll do one more. This is um came from alt-market.us. Alt and this one here is entitled, The New Confederacy? Yes, it has. It's time for conservatives to unite against the global reset. And this is what Mr. Brandon Smith has to say. As it reads here, my friends, narrative could be done, could not be more transparent or obvious. But then again, the elites are becoming lazy in their propaganda, and the leftists are not all that bright. <laughs> Yeah, he's right on that. Uh, essentially, every time conservatives or moderates organize to defend themselves against communists or globalist attack, are we called Nazis, brown shirts, populists, bullies, etc.? Now, I would remind these people that we were really gone to the path of the strong paddle, uh, strong paddle, paddle along, yeah, strong paddle along then there would be more rampant intimidation and assault or on leftists, the point that they would be afraid to leave their homes or identify as leftists. Conservatives believe in self-defense, not, not corrosion or in terror, terror tactics. Such actions are the wheelhouse of the political left these days. They are far better than we are at imitating brown shirt behavior. The reality is that across the board, only people engaging in widespread censorship and violence are on the political left. Yet, we are supposed to be the Nazis. Remember, exceptionalism is patriotic. Historically, there, do, there does seem to be a pattern here. Though, in Germany in the 20s and the 1920s and 1930s, communist groups were brightly act, or highly active and initiated street violence, riots, and even assassinations. This lured many Germans in fear of being overtaken by communist regime to support National Socialism. On the other side of the coin, when it comes to tyranny, 
In other words, to defeat the communists, the public support of the fascists. And the fascists ended up being just as bad as the communists. Remember, it's that socialist uh, platform. Government knows best, okay? And and if tell, you tell it to one or the other, they wig out. Ah! So I'll continue on. If you study the investigations of historians like Andy Sut- Anthony Sut- and Tony Sutton, 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 not something but Sutton, <laughs> and books like Wall Street and the Bolshevik Revolution and Wall Street and the Rise of Hitler, you will discover there is an incredible evidence proving that both the communists and the fascists were funded and managed by the same global elites. In other words, the bankers win either way because they control both sides of the game. I do suspect that a similar strategy is being implemented within the U.S. today. And the part, and that part of the agenda of globalists hell-bent on getting their great reset is to foment civil war in America while controlling or manipulating both sides of the fight. Indeed, a... Uh, Catch-22 for conservatives. If we roll over and do nothing, then the extreme left and their corporate and political partners take control of the country, and we will never see freedom again as they assert their social justice. Mandates along with their lockdown um, mandates. If we fight back using the same tactics as the leftists or support martial law, then we ultimately erase the civil liberties protected within the Bill of Rights. Those rights will never return. Don't believe the promises for a second. And we, bec- and we become history's biggest hypocrites and a cautionary tale of the dangers of nationalism. Told to children generations from now, much like the Nazis. There is, however, another option and is not diplomacy. The establishment likes to make people think there are only ever two choice, only ever two choices during any crisis, and both choices involve giving up more freedom or giving government more power. What they don't want you to consider is the third option: people taking power for themselves and removing power from those that would abuse it. Why should we rely on a middleman to attack such measures? Why we are always being told that we need to wait for a president or a government to do the job we can do ourselves? That's the question. The liberty movement don't revolve around Trump or the election, and it should never rely on martial law as a means to secure our safety. We can do this on our own without asking permission or waiting to be led by a mascot. It is true that the political left and conservatives are no longer capable of finding common ground, except, interestingly, among some moderate liberals that also stand against forced vaccinations and medical mandates. In terms of the hard left, their cult cult is, (coughs) is so far beyond reality now that it would be impossible to reconcile. They live on another planet and their frothing zealotry is too entrenched for them to ever see reason. In their delusional fantasies, we are the ultimate villains and they are the noble freedom fighters. Of course, every single establishment power platform in the corporate world, in big tech, and in the mainstream media is at their disposal not to mention millions in funding from globalist organizations like the Open Society Foundation and the Four Foundation. So this tale to the leftist underdog make us double over with laughter at times. The majority of conservatives just want to be left alone, to live our lives the way we see fit, you know, like real Americans are supposed to do. But this notion is not acceptable to collectivists. They argue that we are all part of a society. Their society, and we must abide by their ideologies and rules. For the greater good or suffer the consequences. In other words, you can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. The fact is, groups in general are abstractions of the mind. Just because someone declares that you are part of their society does not make it so. Walking away is every individual's right as a human being. Groups that survive and thrive tend to be built on shared values and principles. 
they don't all need to agree on every detail, but they can't be diametrically opposed in every other, every way either. And that is true, because even myself, I was a union officer, and some of the good amount, some of the officers I have my battles with doesn't mean we disagree on everything, okay? So it's okay to disagree, but use finesse, folks, okay? I will continue on here. Usually, with, with the principles that match with an inherent sense of conscience are the groups that most people to appeal. They, they, that said, there are people in this world around 1-5% to 5 of any given population that do not have inherited conscience, inherited conscience or they suffer from an ingrained affliction called narcissism. These people are attracted to movements that seek to dominate others and they maintain membership through force rather than appealing to participate. There is no possible way that this group can never, can ever, coexist with people that values freedom and empathy, at least not without incredible conflict. There is large and growing opposition to pandemic lockdown measures. Social justice policies that amount to cultural Marxism, as well as the prospect of a Biden presidency, which would encourage both of these travesties, expen ex expulsionately, is all not all about Biden or the leftists, obviously. The reset goes far beyond them, but many conser conservatives are looking at the problem more according to what is directly in front of them and less according to the people behind the curtain. In the light of this mainstream media doing exactly what it's designed to do, create propaganda to shame anyone that dares to oppose the prevailing establishment narrative. The most recent stra um, strategy is to label the conservative rebellion against the reset as the new confederacy and bring up the specter of the civil war. The narrative is riding on the back of discussion among conservatives and state politicians that possibly the possibility of succession should be explored in the wake of growing impasse between leftists, the globalist agenda, and freedom-loving Americans. The establishment and the useful idiots on the left will have none of it, despite the fact that all they talk about the first two years of the Trump presidency was secession. Now that the shoe is on the other foot, if Biden enters the White House, and maybe, if he doesn't, the SJWs and their media counterparts are furious at the idea that conservatives might actually succeed where they failed. Collectivists are good at destroying things, not creating things. Their calls for secession were a joke because we all know that they are incapable of self-sufficiency and also they have no means of defense. One look at short-lived time zones like the Chaz will give you insight to what would happen if leftists try to separate within the states. It would be a disaster for them. When conservatives talk about separation, though the leftists and globalists listen, they might not ever admit it, but they know we are actually capable of it. To be clear, what I believe is happening is that conservatives are being potted, prodded, and provoked not to separate and organize, but to centralize. I think they want us to support actions like martial law, which would be considered totalitarian. Conservatives the only stal stalwart defenders of civil liberties using military suppression and abandoning the Bill of Rights to maintain political power, that is a dream come true for, gl for the globalists in the long term. And despite people's faith in Trump, there are far too many banking elites and globalists within his cabinet to ensure that such power will not be able to not be abused or used against us later. I think the concept of the new confederacy label being used by the left by leftists and the media reveals what they truly fear though. I can I if they can get us to roll over for the lockdowns and and, and medical tyranny and a Biden dictatorship, they're happy. 
if they can get us to support martial law under the Trump under a Trump coup, they're happy. But what they don't want is for conservatives and moderates to form their own organizational resistance, not beholden to any singular political figure or top-down pyramid structure. Such organizations is ha- or, such organizations happening right now. Millions of liberty-minded Americans are leaving leftist counties and states, taking their wealth and businesses with them, and going to more conservative regions where they feel they will be they will be safer. There there has not been an ideological immigration like this in the U.S. for well over a century. The reality is that conservatives are congregating finally, and they are starting to work together by for their own security. In my own area, Montana, I have been running local open meetings on preparedness and current events in the hopes of getting people on the same page and networked in the event that the current crisis spills over and rule of law breaks down, or in the event that there is an attempt by the state or federal government to enforce medical lockdown mandates where we live. These meetings have been expanding in the past couple of months, and needless to say, the people in my own town are not going to submit to restrictions and do not plan to hide quietly in their homes while their community and businesses are destroyed. These groups are forming across across the country, and thank God, because without community organization, there is zero chance of survival or freedom for liberty-minded Americans. As I've um, noted in some of my latest articles, the rebellion against lockdowns and vaccination mandates is visible even in the hard left states like California and New York. There is much to be optimistic about. However, the fighting, the fight is going to be difficult and there will be ample um, vitrolo uh, leveled against us as we successfully unify. Organizations require requires a tit-for-tat philosophy to do well, meaning everyone must take some risk in order to encourage others to join the fight. For an example, conservatives want business owners to refuse to enforce lockdown rules, but if a business owner makes this courageous choice and faces off government health officials, then patrons need to be there to back them up. This this might even mean standing in the way of law enforcement that is violating constitutional rights of that business. I call this creating a wall of worry. Many police and sheriffs are not on board with the enforcement of legal mandates, but those that are need to understand that there are potential consequences for doing so. A wall of worry is a deterrent, and the larger group of, of um, people involved, the better. Um, police are not going to take risk escalations to fight over lockdown mandates if they realize that fight could go badly for them. And if people in their own departments are against the lockdowns, the consequences double if they seek to enforce them. They should be in one the ones worried, not us. Health department officials are even lo- less likely to push the issue in the face of opposition. By extension, if your local sheriff's department or police department is standing against unconstitutional mandates and the state or federal government threatens them with repercussions, you might you must be there to offer help and support. They are taking a risk for you, so you must be willing to take a risk for them. I'm also hearing considerable chatter that many medical professionals, including doctors and nurses, are going to refuse to take the poorly tested and unquestionable COVID vaccine for fear of damaging side effects. effects. And why should they? Why take a vaccine for a virus that only threatens less than 0.3% of the public outside of nursing homes? Medical professionals are under immense pressure to take the vaccine or lose their license to practice. Conservatives must defend them if they rebel against mandatory vaccination. This means helping them to set up their own clinics outside of the control system where they can continue to aid people and still make a living. This means networking liberty-minded patients that need treatments for various ailments to doctors and nurses that will not demand they show a medical passport 
and will not report them to the government. This means protecting doctors and nurses from retribution should government officials try to punish or arrest them. Communities will need to build their own localized economies. Using barter and trade and may e- maybe even creating a local currency script, hopefully backed by some kind of commodity, they're going to have to insulate themselves from the lockdowns economically in order to divide the lockdowns in a practical way. Otherwise, anyone that does not confirm to medical passports and contact tracing will be denied access to the establishment-controlled economy and die of poverty. We have to create alternatives. We have to offer people a choice outside of tyranny. Otherwise, many will go along with the tyranny. Finally, conservative communities are going to provide for their own security, regardless of how the election situation actually ends, and even if Trump stays in the White House and refuses to concede, martial law is an unacceptable scenario. Conservatives don't need it anyway. We should be establishing localized security, otherwise known as militias, composed of an able-bodied person in that community that wants to join. These militias will have to form as unofficial organizations, and it's unlikely that state politicians will sanction them. That's okay. We don't need them to sanction our own security and defense. Like I said, we can handle it ourselves. In the meantime, leftists will label us brown shirts, but as mentioned, they are the people that proven over and over again to be violent and totalitarian. So their accusations ring hollow. In other words, they emulate the ones they despise. The media will call us the new confederacy, which is funny because the majority of confederates and slave owners during the Civil War were Democrats. That is true. And remember, a lot of, a lot of people that actually served under the Civil War, many of them were blacks, Hispanics, and Jews. Okay, it wasn't just all white Anglo-Saxon guys. Okay, even the Irish got involved as well. Okay, so I'll continue on. Well, set aside that irony and point out the people have an inherent right to self-defense and to freedom from oppression, and none of us are slave owners. Anyone that calls for the globalist reset is an enemy for civil of individual rights, and anyone that tries to enforce medical tyrannies is on the wrong side of history and morality. They can call us whatever they want and make erroneous historical comparison until they are blue in the face. But it won't change the fact that we are seeking to be free and they are seeking to take the, that freedom away. That is all that matters. Yep. Brandon Webb. Brandon Smith, excuse me. Absolutely, folks. You always got to look at that. And remember, Jefferson said it once again, one time, a little rebellion now and then is good. Nullification is a great remedy. If they want to have us, like if Biden gets sale and wants to do a mandatory mask order, we can give the big middle finger and go, we're not complying. Got the 10th Amendment, and there's a lot of states, a lot of municipalities have um, resolutions, including Virginia and Kentucky's resolution. Okay, so folks out there, if he says wear the mask, Give them the big middle finger. We all would. That's for anyone trying to tell us how to live and think. Think locally. Act locally. Is is the right thing to do. Because the bottom line is this, folks. When you start to be more self-contained, you realize. They need us more we need them. That's what they want you to know. But I said, I do. I want you to to be informed in, this, in these areas. So do your best. Love your neighbors. Love yourself. Stick together. Don't be like a bunch of peasants or a bunch of whiners. That don't get you anywhere. Action speaks louder than words. And you know what? That will be it. I would like to thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share us through your social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or sense on this interesting you want to check out, whatever you do, please send your correspondence to the quorum. Furthermore, I'll leave the footnotes of this episode on my speaker page. If you want to contact me, you get me at lokiluck3 at gmail.com or lokiluckNumbers03 at protonmail.com. If you want to send me some donations, you can hit me at 
paypal.me forward slash look look number three. Support the other sites as well. Epoch Times, Alt Market, and um, and the Rutherford Institute. All right, yeah, they're great organs. They're great, great folks trying to spread the love, truth, and all that. So definitely, folks, these are the ones you want to um, align with. Trust me on that. All right, once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that demoniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Till next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love. And may your guardian spirits be with you. Mm-hmm.